uh, you got the, the script. I sent it by email. So uh, if you haven't read it yet, you can you can keep it in front of you so you know what's coming. And uh, yeah, I mean we have 45 minutes to to to, to cover uh, the, the the topics on the in the script. And uh, yeah, let's keep the the dialogue going. So are you are you, are you all ready? <laughs> Yeah, I Good. think so. I'm just gonna open up your email here on the side so I can take a yeah. sneak peek at it. Same here. So, okay. I might I might improvise a bit there, but so don't get uh, don't get shocked. But uh, yes, I can. All right. Good. Good. Now I need to sneeze, of course. <laughs> <laughs> During the COVID, that's yeah, the, one one of the worst crime that you can do. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> I, I think I think it will be fine. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Let's get started. So. Okay. Good. Good. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, uh, welcome back from the break. I hope you had a good one. Uh, now we're gonna shift gear a bit and uh, and talk about smart offices and and how location is becoming a a a, a, a clear enabler uh, for enabling use cases and needs in, in the offices of, of the future and of today. Uh, we've all seen the trend from moving towards an activity-based uh, workplace, which has set some, some requirements on, on, on the offices, uh, where to find your colleagues and the seats, uh, driving the need for, for digitalizing your environment. We have clearly also seen the, the impact that COVID has had on, on, on the office spaces, uh, introducing use cases like social distancing, contract tracing, anything to ensure the well-being of the employees uh, when at the office. And uh, that, of course, has triggered uh, a work model for, for remote working. And that then means how do we enable the collaboration uh, with colleagues that are not in the same uh, physical space that you are, and so on. So there's plenty of use cases that uh, that that are are looking for tools, technologies to really uh, ensure the, the 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 customer experience while working in a smart office. I'm not the expert here. Uh, I'm still Thomas Hasselman, the CMO of Coupa, that you've been hearing throughout the day. My, my role is to facilitate a panel discussion now with, uh, with the following gentlemen. So I will let uh, Tibor, uh, Tommy and Mikhail introduce themselves. So over to you, uh, Tommy. Let's... Hello, my name is Tommy Teikko and I'm a, a father of Empathic Building Solution and, and part of the Haltian uh, organization. Uh, bringing the IoT and positioning and these kind of technology things into the built environment, uh, built environment, so to say, you can call it smart smart buildings. Happy to be here. Thank you, Tommy. Good to have you, uh, Tibor. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tibor Indre. Um, I'm uh, part of. Uh, Real estate uh, developer, full scale real estate developer, HB Revis, and its technology part, uh, which is called Symbiosis. Um, our job is to connect uh, people um, with the physical space uh, utilizing technology. Excellent. Good, good to have you with us, uh, Tibor, as well. And then we have Mikhail. Over to you. Hello, guys. Uh, Mikhail Brimberis. Uh, facility manager at Telia company in Sweden. Uh, so I'm in charge of uh, our headquarters in Stockholm. And um, yeah, I'm trying to uh, make our workplace a bit more digitalized, so to speak. And um, right now we're working on, on setting up the empathic building for uh, three offices in Sweden. So uh, wow. that's why I'm here. Exciting times, Mikael, definitely. Yeah, it's great to have you on board to, to hear the voice of the customer really that is is uh, and will be using uh, uh, a, 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 the empathic building solution. Good. Uh, we have a quote here to get to start setting the scene. A, a quote from Gartner from 2020, where we're talking about uh, really the, the importance of the integrated workplace management systems 
and uh, the importance there that the buyers are that are looking for is really around the intuitiveness and, and the ease of use of those systems and I'm sure this is something you you can all uh, relate to and sign up to uh, so why are we looking for data-driven buildings and people-centric offices uh, in the first place so uh, Tommy what, what what really got you to, to give birth to the empathic building Actually, that 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 seed came uh, already like uh, more than ten years ago, uh, all, almost almost like a twenty years ago. I have a long history of creating applications, so I'm a nerdy nerdy guy and and been been developer myself, not really good one, but but doing applications for different different industries. But and and I was working in an HR consulting company in Finland. Called, which, which was giving these kind of HR services. I was an IT guy there, of course, uh, but, but uh, somehow these kind of HR topics, they stuck to my head that, that how we can have more uh, better, better work environments and workplaces. And then, then five, five years ago, uh, I was part of Tieto, Tieto Every Corporation and, and we, we started our own company headquarters project and we were changing the way of the company was working you know from these kind of dedicated desks own rooms to full in activity based type of working and i was participating in those those uh, workshops five years ago and and i was listening people fears about <gasps> If I don't have my own desk, uh, how can I find my colleagues? You know, how can I even can <laughs> can survive in my my like a daily daily life? And and all the, these kind of fear fears that what do I do with my papers? <laughs> and and so on and and listening those uh, fears uh, that then it came. Empathic building minimum viable uh, product was born. You know, we I decided to create a digital workplace solution with which will support modern ways of work. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Tom. Yeah. Especially, especially like activity based type of working where you select your place based on your activities, and that was the beginning. So not not fully from the scratch. So I, I had some kind of sneaky background to be in an HR consulting company that make me interested about human relationships and and and, and people interactions and, and leadership. Great, yeah. And that's something I believe that anything that uh, comes to smart offices, they should be people people centric approach here. And uh, Tibor, uh, how do you look at that? Uh, why, why did you launch the Symbiosi uh, offering uh, 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 to, to serve this, this market? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I, can, I can relate to what, what Tommy said, of course. Um, my, my background is, um, is, a, is a bit similar. I was, uh, I was in a product management role uh, within um, real estate consultancy group. Um, and we, we started looking and started digitizing the real estate portfolios. We started looking at all sorts of data, starting with energy, um, then uh, looking, started looking at occupancy, utilization. But, but what I was missing really um, was, uh, what was the personal, uh, was, was the people-centric element. Um, because uh, based on the data, decisions like um, Real estate portfolio optimization could be made, for example. Well, so let's let's decide um, which type of operations uh, do we position in uh, in which building? Is, is it close to the city center or is it is it a bit far? But um, what what I was with, uh, what I was missing was the was the people element, people segment as well. Um, that's that's why in HP release um, um, was why it was a match for 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 this vision because uh, this this real estate developer really puts people in the center of uh, of, of each development. They uh, we try to build communities instead of uh, instead of just providing providing a space. And uh, what we were lacking was uh, was the technology element. 
um, because through data and through usage um, you can understand and, and through user stories what what why are people coming to the office um, what uh, are the services that they need to get uh, throughout the day um, and now more than ever why they why they need to come back uh, and we, we believe it's uh, uh, it's built around the social interaction uh, be it either digital um, be it physical or now nowadays hybrid uh, so so that's why uh, that's why the technology platform um, was more than necessary to understand we to understand the usage to understand the needs of the people and uh, through data um, optimize their experience that that's why symbiosis uh, that's why symbiosis was started within HP Rivis. I remember actually I was I was visiting your office in Bratislava three years ago and I was like oh my god like a building owner who actually cares about the end user experience it, 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 it amazed me yeah because in the real estate business you are still you know hunting the energy saving part <laughs> yeah so, I, I, I have yeah, to jump yeah. in here I feel <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Mikael. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, it makes me happy to to hear this because this is also something that you know that I feel strongly about. That for me as a facility manager or working in uh, corporate real estate, it's it's easy to start looking at these you know square meters per employee and you know <clears throat> cutting costs based on uh, yeah of course energy efficiency and such. But to me, the way I see it is that I'm I'm firstly and foremost. Uh, about the employees and, and the, my whole role is about supporting the employee and their experience in the workday. So I think that you know having these smart solutions is firstly to provide the employees with support and functionality in their workday. And when we have them uh, to get that, those kind of options and do that, we will get all of this data for free sort of, uh, which we can look and utilize, uh, how we can utilize the building better and look at the occupancy and those kinds of things. So yeah, I, I definitely like that approach. Yeah, likewise, thank you. So uh, it's interesting what, I've just, what we heard here now, and I'm now relating it to, to another uh, finding from a, from a recent Gartner survey where they're saying that this year and through 2022, there is still requirements around social distancing, uh, and drive, that then drives the demand for location, location uh, uh, applications, and uh, also they're finding from from this year's study is that location applications uh, such as utilization and occupancy and wayfinding are very useful for the indoor space uh, for offices uh, and, and and indoor environments in general. Uh, it kind of relates to what we were talking about, but uh, you guys brought up much more strongly the, 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 the really the, the, the experience in the office. That, and uh, let's go to that one now. Let's talk about the use cases that uh, that uh, where location really enables uh, uh, the, 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 the things that will drive drive the usage of, 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 of smart offices. So, Mikael, really, why did you go for in this in your case the Batik building uh, offering for your office? You, talked already about the people centricity there any other requirements that that really uh, made you decide for it yeah of course and uh, I think that's what I love about the empathic building that it suits or caters to many many of the sort of problems that we have run into in the past um, what one of them is the uh, what sort of started it was the the meeting booking service or the assistant for that because like managing the the office that I'm in charge of we have 47,000 square meters and close to 300 rooms uh, it they are hard to manage <laughs> and and it's hard for the for the employees to find the right room you know the right size the right equipment so so that is sort of where where it took off uh, but also speaking to to my um colleagues about you know what they are lacking and missing in their day-to-day -day work is a lot about you know finding each other uh, since it's such a big office and we are completely activity based this the function of colleague finding is was really something that that appealed to me uh, and what was sort of i mean there's nothing good about the pandemic i think but it has been uh an uh, enabler for a lot of these discussions and functions because now we also see that we can use these solutions to see where if there are maybe too many people located in the same area that we have crowds or such that it helps the 
the user to see that, okay, maybe I should stay away from, you know, this corner of the office right now, but there seems to be a lot of people there right now. That we didn't, okay, yeah, we could look at it before from like, if you wanted to have a, a calm space maybe and not, not go there. But now the whole safety uh, issue comes into this as well. So yeah, the, the, those are what the, some of the, the top reasons that, that we are looking at empathic building at least. Excellent, yeah. And Tommy, uh, so what are the really the top three use cases uh, that that really drives the empathic building uh, adop adoption worldwide? Uh, I, funny to say, I, I never thought that I will say this, but but uh, location uh, and service tickets, you know, that you can report that there is something wrong, and using a location information, it's like a must-have. And 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 it's funny to say, really, that that one of the most liked feature when we are asking our end customer, end users, what is the top three of your favorite functionalities and use cases that you are using the digital workplace tool, or, or smart office, or however you want to call it, uh, always top three is a, is a reporting possibility to report problems, including the location. That's amazing. It still amazed me because I thought it's like uh, how how I select the workplace or like uh, always to find your colleague is top three. Yes, that's really really important and 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 no matter that uh, oh, there is really good experiences of of it our end customers that they they consider this kind of you know. I think even even Italia, you did test this in in your office, the mobile phone based positioning, and uh, it doesn't deliver. There is a technical problems, there is a end user trust problems, there is a battery consumption problems, yeah. there is just the problems. And 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 with our experience, you know, reliable positioning, unfortunately, cannot happen with the with the mobile phone today. So, so something to consider, but but uh, long answer. Basically, positioning should be in all in all use cases, and and that brings the uh, well, well. You cannot say you have a smart building if you don't have a real time position. End of discussion. <laughs> you can you can dream smart building, but if you don't have a real time accurate positioning, it's not. And it come, it goes everything: security, uh, safety, even maintenance. You know, employee experience, end user experience. It's all over. Positioning is all over, and and the most needed data source with all the occupancy sensors and indoor air quality sensors. Cool, cool. Yeah, great insights, Tommy. Thanks and. Uh... Tibor, yeah, does this resonate with with your you and your cases and experiences, or are other ones that drives really the adoption of uh, of, of uh, the symbiosis offering? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, first and foremost, uh, it's a it's a great uh, it's a great onboarding feature. So it's uh, the the personalized position, finding people, finding points of interest. Um, it it provides. Um, um, it provides ease of mind for the people either they are, if even if they are onboarding to the new office or they are newcomers to the company and uh, and the company is on a larger scale um, like like one of our customers in, in in seven floors it's a huge office finding finding uh, stuff is difficult uh, can be can be troublesome um, so either dynamic, either those dynamically moving or those uh, those fixed providing an interface for this. Uh, that that's a great feature, and uh, and yeah, we we have similar we have similar experience. Um, a help desk, including location, um, having uh, having uh, uh, to spend less time reporting what what is wrong, uh, and and where did it happen is 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 still very very likable feature. Uh, I, I I also thought that it would be like. Uh, possibility to to interact, uh, possibility to understand uh, with uh, with how many people I need or the location-based services. Uh, yeah, it's it's the simple things uh, all all the time. Or maintenance based on the people count. That that's ha having having stuff on demand based on 
based on number of people, based on the usage, basically. Um, that's uh, th th that's really demanding. But what I would like to point out is um, that uh, our customers maybe opted in for the experience uh, in the first place before the pandemics, but during and, and after um, those that uh, that adopted uh, personalized real-time position uh, let's put it this way they they had easier they had easier life during the pandemics because of the contact tracing use cases um, adopting social distancing so use cases that we that we never thought of uh, that that we would have to implement but uh, with uh, with the technology that may seem to be uh, for some um, as as an overkill in the beginning, uh, that they, they they really they really are ready uh, during the transition and they are ready to to onboard and adapt uh, to new ways of working, uh, to hybrid office, uh, to reduced uh, capacities, um, workplaces. Um, being designed more towards activity based more towards collaboration um, they have data they understand the usage and they can they can adapt more quickly and and they will be ready for the use cases that we never thought of like like social distance and contact tracing yeah now i remember tibor you had one of your colleagues uh, was uh, was uh, was diagnosed with with covid and and and, and the way you use then the, the location information uh, with the people that were could have been exposed to it, it was amazing to see that. I mean, it wasn't only about the ones that got exposed, to it, but it was more important to see that the ones that weren't exposed. So you could really narrow down the the team, the people that that uh, that needed to get tested. So it it was a yeah, not a nice ex nice uh, concrete example of how how location was was there enabling. Uh, uh, combating the the, the pandemic, but uh, but it, it showed the power of it. Yes, and um, that uh, that particular case, um, well, the colleague is fine, so 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 we can yeah, we, we can we, we can use this example. <laughs> um, actually, um, we we managed uh, this way. We managed to um, have the office open throughout the pandemics. Not of course not the full capacity, of course not. Uh, but for for some of the critical infrastructure um, of the company, they they, they uh, with the peace of mind they could come to the office um, because we we tweaked the use case, we anonymized the data in a, in the normal processing. But but for this particular case, uh, um, for people that opted in, uh, we were able to contact trace uh, if there was uh, someone if there was someone ill. We actually got. Um, around 20 cases throughout the pandemics. Um, we had uh, the, our, our office capacity is around uh, 400 people. On average, there was there was uh, 35 to 50 uh, in the office um, throughout the pandemics. We had uh, this, this part of the pandemics. We had like 28 cases, um, and uh, we were able to, to really to narrow down um, only those that uh, that that was endangered. And, and others could come safely back to their families without without knowing uh, with knowing that uh, they are safe. Basically, they, that they had no um, no interaction with um, um, with a sick colleague. For yeah. Example. yeah. Good. So, Mikhail, then um, uh, have you seen the 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 the? Okay, you are still still in in, in the ramp up phase of of, of the empathic building, but uh, the decision to go for it. So, what were the the, the 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 willingness to opt in for personalized location and and the related services to it? So, can you elaborate a bit around that because that could be a a, a showstopper. Yeah, exactly. And and um, of course, it scares me a bit. And and I know that you know that this is one of the the biggest topics of discussion that has been when we have been talking about this and. I've been in um, this sort of risk analysis together with our, um, what do we call them, health and safety officers, I believe, uh, around this. And there is always this, um, you know, people are scared of, of Big Brother being monetized all the time and those kinds of things. Well, which 
I understand. I mean, I used to be a bit like that also, but then, you know, if you start to think about it in a wider perspective, like if you have a smartphone today, Apple, Google, Facebook, whatever, those guys know where you are, what you had for breakfast, what your dog's name is. I mean, this is the, the new reality for us now. So, you know, visualizing where you are in the office, that shouldn't be a thing, I, I believe. And uh, like Tommy was ex explaining before, we, we have sort of tried this before with our mobile phones with another solution, which didn't really work out. But I think first of all, we weren't mature enough for it and the technology wasn't good enough for it. Uh, and now looking at it from the perspective of that, it, it's not me that has come up with this idea to, to have this. It's based on the user feedback that I get that, you know, we want to we want it to be easier to do make service requests. We want to find our colleagues and that kind of things. So I'm hoping that this will enable our um, our staff to see this as, as a solution and, uh, and uh, support and help in their work day and not that they're being monitored by their ma managers or something like that, because that is not the, the, the scope. That is not what we are after. It's, it's all about the employee experience. Cool, yeah, no, that's, that's good. Uh, yeah, let's then talk a bit about uh, what, are we, what are we actually expecting to get out of this, uh, these solutions? And so really, what, what are the KPIs or are there any ROIs that the management uh, insists on, on, on to be demonstrated uh, before selecting the solution or for using the solution? So, Tommy, I'm sure you you faced these the questions in, in, your, in your, the cases you've been, been um, engaged in. So, so what, are, what, what are we looking for? Yeah. So, with every prospect, yes, uh, especially when the CFO people are in the meeting room or in the virtual room discussing about what is my payback for this. You know, uh, some some companies doesn't want to invest for employee experience. They are fine to provide some kind of you know physical space for. Or, after the pandemic they can even even shut down the offices you are you are perfectly okay from home so mm -hmm. so uh, companies who are is investing to the safety and and employee experience and wants to provide good and and attract talent and be really the future employer uh, that's a no-brainer because uh, as an example empathic building with uh, with uh, Coupa positioning, we, we can solve 25 small problems during the day, which makes your life much, much more easier. Not huge amount of easier in that sense that we, we cannot say that you don't get cancer <laughs> but, mm. but, or, or COVID. But, mm. but we can say that, that you don't need to spend time. The, if, let's say if you are five minutes uh, late from the meeting, and and that other other people decided to take another room because of bad air quality or whatever reason age uh, there was a problem with connectivity you don't need to call you don't need to hassle you just see ah okay they did change the room you sneak in it's efficient and and meeting is not disturbed by that and that was only one one example and you can have 25 of those during the day and I think now companies who are thinking about and a little bit afraid of this kind of, oh, do I need to do this investment to, to, to create this digital workplace and, and experience. And if you don't believe that, that bringing a happy people and, and uh, bringing the effectiveness to the daily life of people when, when they decide to come to the office, then maybe this is not for your tool <laughs> because you, you just you need to have some trust uh, because there is no short time uh, payback for saving 20 minutes of employees work time without that you don't need to search things it's not visible in anyone's excel in day one unfortunately because that would be of course easy 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 way to say but, but after 10 years, this company will be the winner because the employees, they, they, they are more committed. They are more happy. They deliver more. They can even do better profit. 
when when they are uh, motivated so so in a longer period of time it will pay back thousand times <laughs> true and I, I just what? add on there uh, yeah, uh, on. i think you're completely right tommy and and that's the way i see it like Firstly, it, it can seem sort of um, uh, strange that uh, one of the requests that I have or, or my expectations with, with having empathic building is that the amount of service tickets that we get is going to go up. But that is something they that will. I want. Yeah, they will. And I, that is what I want, because I know that from a historical perspective, we have been having issues with not having these uh, faults reported because mm -hmm. people think it's too big of a hassle. They don't want to go into our service portal and do fill out this form with 10 fields. They don't want to give send an email or call the service desk because it takes too much time for them. So I'm hoping exactly. that this will will increase the the amount of so it maybe it will look bad on paper that oh you have so many faults <laughs> but it it just brings them to light so we can fix them that's that's basically it yeah and that yeah with our experience of implementing 50 uh, more almost almost now 60 installations uh, in 20 countries that it, it always happens there is there is more more service tickets and 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 but but that's the one way of giving better end user experience also because things get fixed <laughs> yeah exactly. yes first it takes time i i fully agree but then the balance comes mm -hmm. you know there is no more accidents happening toilets doesn't go broken more often when of course, when there is more end users using the office, of course, then that's a more probable. But but yeah, but really really good point, and and that's a clear outcome. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Tibor, your 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 experience from uh, from what is what is expected as as uh, as a sort of a concrete benefits from using the, the smart offices. Um, yes, I, I, I would agree. But uh, from the um, from the position of uh, of uh, real estate development company, let's say, um, I think that uh, our our life uh, got much much harder than before pandemics. It was it was all around uh, it was all around providing superb space, of course, uh, for 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 those educated companies and, and the experience. Right now. Um, we are competing about. Uh, uh, we are competing about the. Um, we are competing about those employees, right? Because now, what we learned something, and companies learned something uh, during the pandemic. So companies learned that people can do work on the home office, and and they they can do they can do great great job in the home office. Um, there was a there was a learning curve that uh, some tech companies said that. Okay, our employees can work from home forever, right? They never have to come back to office. Um, after some time, uh, even CEO of Netflix uh, started to say, "Okay, the collaboration is uh, starting to suffer. Um, the, the 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 physical interaction, the social interaction that uh, that that is lacking when working from home. We we don't have we still don't have uh, the right tools." uh for for the digital interaction even now as, as we are speaking i'm i'm start, i'm trying to look at you guys but uh but what i'm really looking at i'm i'm, I'm fiddling between the camera and the screen because uh um, I, I want to look at you um but uh but i want to look at the camera as well so 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 our our eye contact never meets so yeah. we didn't have a conversation um actually um so, so we still don't have the right tools, and what we are competing, uh, what we are competing with, is uh, um, is the flexibility that people have in the in the home office. Why should they come back to office? Why why they need to come back? Why they uh, why they why they want to give up the flexibility that they have at home, and still can do uh, still can perform the work? What we think. Um, uh, in Symbiosis and in HP Revis is that uh, that the collaboration, that the social interaction, we you know, people don't have to come back that often into the office, but when they come, uh, they would want a superb experience when collaborating with their colleagues. That 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 that's what we think. So providing offices 
providing offices for this uh, for this collaboration and saving their time providing flexibility providing services all of this remains but when they come we need to deliver so they want to come again so they need so they feel the impact of if i stayed at home my collaboration was okay ish i i, I could perform my work but when i need to create value when i need to collaborate i rather come to the office because it's safe and the experience is great and then all of the all of the maintenance all of all all of this it's still valid and 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 the personalized position still adds value there because you have the accuracy you have the granularity but we think that this is the this is the new role of the office and, uh, and the, the experience plays a crucial role in this yeah good 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 observations Tibor. <laughs> yeah i mean what we discussed before we started the panel is that uh, at least tommy and mikhail they're sitting in their kids rooms uh, to get either the, the the privacy because there's some other conference calls going on in in, in the neighboring room or then it, it was the room that, that uh, I mean, you have to clean it up a bit so that you can have the video camera on. So yes, the experience in the office is hopefully can, can, can sort of beat the, 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 the ambiance that you are, you are sitting in today. So good ones. Hey, let's talk a bit about uh, the challenges. So uh, technical, cultural, uh, what are the main challenges in, 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 uh, in rolling out and, and adopting uh, a smart office solution uh, that's vocation aware. So, Tommy, do you want to start and talk a bit about uh, that? Yeah, <clears throat> the challenge challenge is to to make uh, which we already discussed, like like this. Uh, what what's the value of having this positioning? And and uh, like I already said that it's if, if you even dream about digital workplace experience or smart building. Uh, real-time positioning is must-have thing. It's not nice have thing. It's it's like a must. And and of course the COVID has uh, bring bring uh, lots of tools to validate that. Like before, uh, there was no such must. Like uh, has someone if you if you are de in desk sharing, uh, has someone been using this des desk since it was cleaned? It's like a must-have information for the end user like a safety perspective which was more or less nice to know information before but now it's must have so so uh those kind of tools of course needed needed for uh, tackle these kind of challenges which are all related to the work culture all of them so nothing else is challenging than than the existing work culture and we need to remember that that our end customers which are quite often large corporations there is no one work culture there is a different culture in different business units there is a different work culture in a di even even inside of different teams inside of different business units and and you need to tackle all those type of obstacles and and one one funny uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I need to share this, but I will anyway. Or should I share it? But but I I'm playing this kind of uh, toilet ping when I meet new customer prospect. I have a meeting, people from facility, IT, HR function, and and I'm I'm making a guess beforehand who will ask the to toilet question. <laughs> toilet question is the legendary question that when you implement this positioning are you followed to the toilet and someone will always ask that another question of course is related to gdpr and privacy but but the toilet question comes so i call it toilet pingo and I'm, I'm quite good with it already so meeting 500 companies related to the positioning and digital <laughs> workplace things so <laughs> they will always pop up so, but but they are all related to the working culture and you True. told me also you always answer yes we follow you into the bathroom and when you get there we start the camera so we can watch you in there also right yes exactly that's I mean, that's, you. that's my default answer yeah. uh Kupa's official answer is that those areas are called black zones and and uh the positioning doesn't follow you exactly yeah <laughs> that's right good 
Mikael, what uh, I think we talked a lot about uh, your uh, your sort of a experience while, while sort of ending up in, in going for for a smart smart office solution. But anything to add here still on the on the on the challenges side? No, yeah, like you said, I think I covered those things with you yeah. know the the being monitored kind of thing. Uh, what I'm uh, struggling a bit with right now, it's it's not a huge challenge, but it's always like in a big company that uh, that I am working with, there are so so many many stakeholders involved in everything, and you know having this kind of system uh, being installed, it affects sort of everyone. It's you know from the network guys in the IT department needs to be involved. Uh, we need to have close discussions with HR and the the unions. And also, you know, the general sort of stakeholder management and, and this communication with the, with the employees in the business. So, it's um, it's not an easy task. Uh, but but I feel like, you know, working working in this kind of company, and we all we usually have these kinds of, you know, whether it's a facility project or some kind of change going on. So we're quite used to it. But um, yeah, you, you just think about, you know, there are a lot of people that, that needs to be informed and be in line sort of with what is going on and what is being planned, of course. So sure. don't, don't forget that to, to plan for, for time and uh, a lot of discussions, uh, especially around the, the toilets. <laughs> True. <laughs> so Tibor, how are you solving the toilet challenge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or any, so other, I mean, any other challenges yeah, that are even bigger than that one? <laughs> Yeah. Rami is absolutely right. It always it, it, it always comes up this question. <laughs> um, but but yeah, um, what basically what how, how we are solving it um, and and mo most most of the challenges that are that are connected uh, with uh, with the working environment or working culture, um, usually um, adopting. Uh, um, Real time position is connected with uh, with uh, with the with the remodeling of the office, right? So so it's either renovation. Uh, so there is uh, ongoing change management and there is uh, uh, ongoing onboarding part. Um, so we inform a lot. Um, we have uh, we have videos ready. Um, we came up with uh, how we process the data. Uh, what is happening with uh, with the personalized uh, with, with the personalized position? How we anonymize it? Um, uh, why you don't see it uh, in, uh, in in all the outputs? Why you only see it on uh, on the digital twin? Um, when we need the personalized position? How we anonymize on the department level? So we educate a lot. Um, that 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 certainly helps. Um, what we are competing with and um, what 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 are our challenges is maybe even before uh the, the relocation before the onboarding process and is uh right now what we feel is uh companies are willing to invest uh into into digitization um into future proofing their office uh, that there's a lot of change going on they 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 are rethinking their real estate footprint um, what will be the purpose of the office but still when it comes to when it comes to cost of this solution sometimes uh, because we we provide a full range of, of services sometimes they they want to opt in for um, for the lighter solution like uh, uh, it will be fine for us if we understand the people count in the office. We don't need we don't need a utilization uh, on each and every single zone. We don't need uh, uh, we don't need a physical interaction. How departments interact, it's fine. Okay, we we just need to understand the the number of people in the office, what zones are utilized and what are not. So so this this is the challenge that we face, um, and uh, that. And, and the onboarding part of, of it, if we if we don't have the the density of the locators right when the when the when the office is being renovated, uh, it's not that easy to fit out. So 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 this this is the this is the argument that we that that we have, um, and um, um, th these are the discussions. What what we use as an argument is the future proofing, uh, so that you will be ready for the for the change. Uh, we, we had no idea that we will need the use cases such as uh, social distance and contact tracing and that uh, after 
six months after you moved in into your new office, you will be repurposing it again uh, after one year, right? So no, no one could, no, no one could uh, could see this coming. Um, so yeah, I, I'd say that this this would be the biggest challenges. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, I guess. if you yeah, if you if if you had anything anything to help how you face this challenge. Uh, sorry, did you did you ask me, Tibor? Yes, uh, either either you or Tommy. Um, yeah. No, but I, well, I can well, just add on. I liked yeah. uh, what you were saying there about you know sort of selling this and and it, when you talk to stakeholders it's often like okay well i see what you are pitching here but can we go for like the 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 light version or whatever mm -hmm. uh because i mean it's it's a lot a lot of times it comes down to money of course and it's uh i think the challenge is to sort of make, make them understand that you know making this investment now will give us you know valuable data and insights for you know years to come basically uh, and like when you said from before, before we had empathic building, I had the uh, passage statistics to help me with finding out how many people were in the office, uh, which was good. I mean, it was good for me to know that, you know, there were 2,500 people in the office yesterday, but that's basically all that I can do with that data. I need more detailed information regarding where are they in the building? What kind of, you know, seats are they utilizing? And, and that's, offers me value that I can you do something with basically hmm. yeah and, and from the end user perspective you never thought about how much actually positioning and and sharing your location to your colleagues actually means uh, how you are going to interact and, and collaborate for example if if you see me in the office in a in a uh, focus area Okay, now Tommy is doing focus work. So it's fine that if I send a chat message and, and try to collaborate that he's not brutal because he doesn't under answer, he's just doing focus work. So position is a vital part of, of information in many perspectives, not only the eff efficiency and, and validating your interior design, which is of course, important part but but from the end user perspective it gives you a trust and 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 you know what is the better way to say to your colleagues when you are openly sharing your thinking and your location it actually drives the work culture into the more digital and more open way it's much much more easier to introduce feedback as a work culture and and other other future things and 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 actually lead the work culture when you have a valid data of, for your decision making not guessing but valid data and and of course like said several times uh, we anonymize them and it's always secure and we obey all the rules and regulations by default of course yeah. <laughs> The whole like empathic building design is based on trust and but but being transparent enough to make a valid data for your decision making good points now we've talked about serious stuff uh privacy and we have a few more minutes to go so let's let's uh let's shift the mode a bit and talk about the fun part of it so what can you do or what are you doing with your offering to to really gamify the experience sometimes things that that really really will, will, will want every employee to get back to work get back to the office because fun things are happening there so who wants to start <laughs> i ha i have raised this bar i i think it was actually one one of coupa events virtual events where i actually innovated this which is still still valid uh, uh when 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 HR and facility and IT and all the management of our, our companies and prospects when they think how we can attract people back to the office. It doesn't happen with your electric table or, or automatic cafe. No, no, that's not the reason to come back. Uh, of course, post pandemic time, hug, seeing other people is a quite valid reason. Yes, but it doesn't last forever. So, so you need to have some kind of attraction level. And, and I, I'm always setting the bar 
in a high level that when when you start thinking how to attract people back to the office you should consider to have christmas party or after work every day so that's an ambition level you need to go you need to have a community where you want to go I can I can uh, jump in there. Uh, we have been, of course, having these discussions right now. Like, what what will make the employees want to come back to the office? You know, for their own sake and not because they have to or something like that. And uh, something that was pitched to us uh, was having these sort of theme days. Uh, I mean, every day in the office. Uh, whereas one of them was uh, uh, I don't remember what the, they called it now, but it's well, basically like about uh, you know games. So uh, we're thinking about setting up an area uh, where you can have like all of these like board games and uh, you can play like pool and those kinds of stuff. And what better way to promote that than using like say the feedback function or the status in, in Empathic Building and say that, okay, you know, this afternoon we're setting up like, let's say uh, uh, a tournament, a chess tournament, for instance. And you know it's free to to show up, you know, for everyone, and and you can see that uh, live on the screen that oh, okay, people are coming there. Maybe I should join them. That that's what I would like to see, definitely. Tibor. Um. Yeah. Um. There you can with a with a personalized position, you can always do scavenger hunt, right? <laughs> um. When when coming back to office, uh, that that's what we actually did. Um. Uh, during onboarding, so there 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 were hidden um, hidden items in the office, and uh, as as you were as you were moving towards, you you could locate some. <laughs> that that's maybe that's that's a nerdy fun part that that uh, that we IT guys can do, right? <laughs> Come up with the scavenger hunt based based on the personalized position. Um, but but yeah, the the attraction part is uh, to offer some of the flexibility back to people. Um, so I, I believe that it can be done via, via digital tools. Um, um, that's that's not connected to to personalized position, but but with the services that that the office can provide, and uh, it can be it can be small bits like uh, if you come back to the office, you will have a, a place to park because the parking spots are shared within the company very transparently. If you come back, uh, you will be able to um, get your car cleaned while you work and while you don't need it. Um, then you will be able to ask someone to uh, to pick up your dry cleaning, and then you will be you will be able to um, uh, pick up the the gifts that you bought online. And someone will get it uh, to, to the office reception. So the flexibility that we all had, uh, let's face it, uh, during the home office times, I could uh, um, I, I could turn on my washing machine you know, between the calls, right? Um, so, so so now if I come back to the office, uh, uh, I will be able to ask someone to to do that. And when you when you um, provide these services on a shared level. Um, it's uh, it's not very costly. The the requests start to, uh, start to coming up, and uh, and uh, and people people feel better, right? Because they 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 got back something uh, when they gave up uh, some of the flexibility uh, when working from home. True, true. Yeah, that's good, 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 good summary. Yeah. Well, we are up on the hour now so i thank you so much tommy mikhail and and tibor this has been at least very enlightening for me and i'm sure for the rest of the audience so thank you everybody uh, and uh wishing you a good end of the day thank you bye bye thanks for thank having you. us bye all right good that's a wrap <laughs> what do you think yes fantastic, fantastic. awesome <laughs> 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 I Good. was I was about to say this hiding hiding this that we have a one customer in Norway who, which is hiding a gold bars in the office, but I didn't. Do. No. <laughs> as, as incentive to come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm thinking maybe a, a ticket for free lunch or a voucher or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Driving people. I like the, the washing the cars thing. That I'd love to have that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. 
we had that Good. luxury in in Tieto Tieto campus uh, that that you could leave your car there and it was washed and and it was shining clear when you when you wow. leave, left home. That was wow. cool. <laughs> no, we have, we have it in Solna actually. The like the same floor of the garage where we parked. There is a car cleaning service. It's really great. Yeah. yeah. Good, but good. but that's funny actually that there is not so much this kind of hairdressing, you know, massage, uh, cleaning, you know. You should have all these kind of services in in the campus. Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That will attract we people. Yeah, consumers, yeah. God damn it. We spent lots of yeah, yeah. you know money as end users to different kind of services, and especially now during yeah, the COVID times when we are not, we cannot travel. We actually have more money, <laughs> money to spend. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Travel, travel <laughs> costs to massage parlors and and whatever. <laughs> and travel yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you have them on the campus, you 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 just make everything when when you are in the work or when you have a pause yeah that's that that's something that helps i think yeah true yeah. i need to run guys yeah but, so uh, yeah, thank you for a good discussion it was yeah. a pleasure thank you gentlemen bye bye yeah, thank you thank you thank you so much take care. thank you bye bye take right. care bye take care bye bye oh.